moved into the social and emotional learning um, program specialist. So I do that for the entire district, um, pre-K through 12th grade. And so I had been kind of doing that um, for the last two years um, in my old role, but moved into this solely. That's my sole focus is on um, that. Um, I'm also a doctoral candidate at the University of Northern Colorado in the Educational Studies program. And my research interests um, really lie in social and emotional learning implementation, uh, qualitative methods. Uh, in the book, they, in that chapter about social and emotional learning, they highlight that there are kind of four different ways to approach it. And one of them that's kind of overlooked especially in my district, is the integration piece. Um, we do a good job of having the freestanding lessons. All of our elementary and junior high schools um, utilize some sort of SEL curriculum in which they um, have some sort of lesson each day dealing with a social emotional competency or multiple competencies. Um, however, we don't have anything for our high school um, campuses. so. That was one area I thought, well, it's a natural fit. We could integrate SEL um, into what they're already doing in English or mathematics or social studies. So I really got interested in, uh, my, my teaching background is in language arts, but I really got interested in mathematics, um, especially so social justice issues with mathematics and how we can teach for that. And so in this uh, chapter, they do a really good job of identifying how to um, coordinate your um, content area goals with your SEL goals. And so that was something I just hadn't really seen before in any of the books that I had about teaching SEL, SEL practices was really a true integration of SEL in whatever content area you're teaching. I think just my overall practice too, not just integrating into the content areas, but how do we integrate SEL into everything that we do? So I work a lot with coaching teachers and principals in their implementation. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that this uh, chapter uh, really highlights is the um, Castle Three Signature Practices. And in fact, that was kind of the, he says that it's, that it's the uh, backdrop, but really it was the foundation for a lot of the lesson plans that are included in this chapter. Um, those three signature practices like the welcoming and inclusion activity, the engaging practices, and then an optimistic closure. So that's one way that we've started implementing that is all of our meetings. Um, anytime I sit down with teachers, we start with that. And so I've just been amazed even in this virtual environment where it's kind of hard to get people to be engaged that just implementing those three practices has really helped teachers um, maybe not just use it in their own um, teaching, but to be more engaged when we're meeting to talk about SEL. Yeah. It kind of lends itself naturally to it. I think a lot of people were really worried that some of the things they would lose from not having the face-to-face, -face, um, but just by, like I said, integrating some of these practices, like the three signature practices, um, the kids are responding to it. and they're able to say, you know, I don't, I don't get this. I don't understand what the lesson is about. And they're being able to use those um, self-awareness and social awareness skills to advocate for themselves in this online learning environment, which um, they may or may not have been doing before face-to-face. -face. So that's just one thing that I have seen. And it's, it's called for them to be very creative as well. Um, one of the things I worked on over the summer was creating SEL lessons in response to the pandemic. So separate from our curriculum that we purchase. And so I just kind of did basic lessons that I thought they could adapt to um, a remote learning environment. And some of those teachers and librarians took those lessons and made flip grid ideas. I mean, just all kinds of, you know, technologically savvy things that were bigger than anything I could have imag imagined. Um, Bitmoji <coughs> classrooms with SEL resources. Um, so things that kids can, you know, access in real time and then also when they're meeting or when they're working on uh, work asynchronously, they could, you know, find a place to go and listen to some relaxing music or do some deep breathing um, while they're working um, and even in face-to-face -face, or that face-to-face -face, uh, synchronous learning environment as well. And so I really wanted to 
to do something like this because like I said, we don't have anything at the high school level. And I feel like good teaching practices for all levels would be to integrate SEL um, in content areas whenever we can. So it really is taking um, uh, the lesson planning uh, templates from here and going, I'm walking through it with the participants in a live session. Um, and so right now that's kind of where I am right now. We're just looking at, okay, what are the objectives? Um, how can we write objectives that cover um, SEL competencies and then also um, content area and how do we word that into where we're showing what skills they're developing through that. Um, and so that's it's set for December and so I have a few months <laughs> to kind of pour through this um, and figure out how I, how I want to go forward with that but I think that moving it from asynchronous to synchronous will allow for that interaction piece that we're seeing um, with SEL with our students that is, was really missing with the asynchronous um, that will be there as well and that maybe they'll bounce some ideas off of each other too. I hope to see it more so as, I guess, a way of uh, building into our culture and our district here um, so that it's not something that's like an addition. That, that's something I did not want it to be is that, oh my gosh, we have to now plan for SEL in our content area, but just something that becomes natural. Um, and I hope it's something that, you know, the teachers continue to want to have. You know, I hope this is not the only session offering that we have of it, that it's well received. Um, so the teachers who, you know, in other parts of the district, either elementary or wherever, can um, gain something from it as well. But, it, you know, it originally started just for high school teachers um, to look at how they can integrate SEL. But I think my goal would be for, for all of the teaching levels to have access to it. This book really did a good job of is talking about how we're never, we haven't never arrived at you know, social and emotional competency, we're not ever going to be there. And I think that's kind of the same thing with CRT. And so in this book, um, just the opportunity for um, discussion and, and reflection on that and for teachers to reflect on that practice, because I, I feel like it's hard for teachers to really um, implement culturally responsive teaching if they don't practice SEL and, and develop those self-awareness skills. So I feel like the book really, especially in this chapter, I can speak to um, more so is that that was really addressed there is that um, it's, we're never going to arrive at that, but we have to make that effort in order for us to be able to connect with our diverse students that we have. Um, and so that was one of the things that I was going to share as well is that, um, you know, ha taking that to the next level and having students write their own social and emotional learning objectives. Mm -hmm. Having teachers model that as well, that they're growing, they're learning as well. Um, you know, not wanting them to share like their biases necessarily, but just, I, I struggle with this as well. And here's how we can develop that growth mindset or whatever the issue is. I mean, my, my natural reaction is to high school teachers, but um, I kind of think people who are in kind of in my position of a coaching position, either on campus or at a district level, um, where they're working with teachers to kind of hone in on their craft and expand what's in their toolbox already. Um, it seems like a great uh, way to reflect on that. There's lots of um, areas where there's discussion questions that um, somebody who's really working to mentor teachers could focus on that and focus on a specific area that they want to improve with their SEL implementation. Um, I think that's one of the things that I really liked about that. Um, also, uh, uh, you know, even our district level leadership, I think it would be great for them to, to look at that as well. I'm just one person in my district, um, but I think looking at maybe the superintendent and really focusing on making it part of our culture in the district um, or in any district.